Yeah. Uh. Gather up. I Mushrooms, run away. Ow. What do you think of Crusaders and Inquisitors? <laughs> Look at these balls of flame. Buy me dinner yeah. first. If you die by my hand, uh, happy. Crusaders. <laughs> Good DPS class. Actually, funny enough, they're both light parties. Both Inquisitors and Crusaders are well known for being in light parties, so. Yeah, uh, that's pretty much it. Nothing else to really say about them. Wizards are a good support class. Crusaders are a good DPS class. Both are especially good in light parties. They, they make up the core of light parties.
Let me grab a water real quick. Oh, crud. You see... We only got like five rounds in, so probably just restart it. Still haven't quite figured out where my my destructive gem for my quiver is, or my chirpo is. Welcome back, Wits.
<laughs> For ruining the moment. Hello there, Khaled. Welcome.
Dang it, every time I forget. Dig, you won't tell me you got to level cap on you only doing quests, right? So... It was mostly questing. 60 through 70 was the critical part of leveling. Um, that was really tricky to do. For the first part of 60, I had a lot of uh, side quests remaining for 5 to town. So the first two levels, 60 to 62, were very easy. I just did 5 to town. 62 through 65 was another matter, because I had a bunch of those side quests around uh, Tel Numara and those dungeons. So that took a lot longer, but I got to 65 using those quests. After 65, um, I, I did... Yo, 17-2008, thank you for the follow, glad you enjoyed the stream, and welcome. After level 75, or 65, sorry, I went ahead and did a lot of quest stalling. I did one, ma I did one main quest every five dungeons, so I did all five dungeons for the dailies, then I would go turn in main quest, and then I would do all the dungeons again and turn in main quest, so I, I stalled for a little bit. At level 70, 78, I used up pretty much all my quests, so 78 and 79 went very, very quick. So yeah, it was pretty much all questing. There was very little grinding I had to do. I did no dungeon more than two times in a row, because there's no reason to. Pretty much, basically the the last few levels, yeah. I all I had to do was quest in Anu Arendelle. I just did the Anu Arendelle quest, which is very easy XP. So, pretty much no problems with leveling on quests. You just have to you just have to plan it out. It it's it's more about like where you want to do your level grind. Most of my level grind happened between 40 and 50 when I was. I was doing a lot of uh, upbeats quests. A lot of upbeat gaming's quests uh, had me running around just doing stuff, and I leveled a few times just by helping him. So that gave me a lot of extra room to work with for quests. And I'd much rather stall earlier than later. Like stalling, stalling later means you 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 probably have to do golden grasslands grind, which is very boring. There's a lot more quests to work with early on. So what's the plan now in Europe? No, not 12 Windwalkers yet. 
first, I have to get geared. I have to get geared enough to be able to do ge um, guardianess and mistness, and I need to get to the point where I am prepared for Anu Arendelle or Deal Nest. That is going to be next for Europe. So until I reach the point where I'm geared enough to do to be ready for a Deal Nest, I am probably just focusing on that character. Are you using OBS? Yes, I am. Very, very popular and free streaming software. So, PKN and TKN? Uh, what about them? I mean, we can do them. I, I'm, I'm looking towards doing Dragon Fellowship and Guardian Nest, though. You have your settings written down somewhere. What settings? Hello there, Podly. Welcome. I stream at 1400 kilobits per second. My encoder is X264. I stream at a resolution of 1366 by 768, and that, that's about all you have to know, that's the only important stuff. Settings are going to change depending on person. Using the same settings as me does not guarantee any kind of result. Every, 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 everybody that streams has to customize their own settings, otherwise it's not going to work for them. By the way, for the Europe Guild, I have two more friends who would like to join, is that okay? I, I need to know who they are, I'm not just gonna invite strangers. I kinda, I kinda wanna get in contact with them, just see what they're like, personality-wise, before I just invite them. I mean, I'm, sh I'm sure if they're your friends, they're probably good people, but I, I need to know them myself, they need to talk to me first. Some way, some form. They have to talk to me. I didn't say that. All I, all I said was, I'm not geared for Anu Arendelle or Dealness. That's what I'm not geared for. I have to work my way up there. And to do that, I have to do Guardian Nest first. And then I have to do Mist Nest to, to get what I need. And then, yeah, eventually I'll be geared enough for Trial Nest. But we have to get there. Doing TK and PKN isn't going to help me progress. So, I have to do Guardian Nest if I want to progress. Uh, that, that's how gearing works. If, if you want better gear, you, you gotta do the hard stuff. You're not gonna get stronger if you if you don't do the hard stuff.
So, like I said, then my next steps, if I want to keep getting geared, I have to do. Oh, don't do that. I have to do Dragon Fellowship. I have to do Guardian Nest. And start earning more stuff. I actually tried to cancel it. But I, I haven't drilled down the, the cancelling thing yet, so. Still not that good at it. Oh, one of them is watching currently? I see, I see. Okay. I mean, as long as as long as I get to talk to them and just kind of get to know what they're like, personality-wise, I'm going to I'm going to take them in, and I'm sure they're good people. Just just have to talk to them a little, just to get to know them, you know. Hey there, monkey man. Good morning. Good morning to ya. Yeah. Or I should say good afternoon for you, but you know what I mean. Hello, bunny lover. Welcome back. Nice to see you again. Acrobat is so fun. Yep. Indeed it is. It's one of the more active movement ba based classes Dragon Nest has to offer. I was gonna walk around them, but I just got sucked into them. Not cool.
in for two years. Well, it, it requires a lot, a lot of practice. Wow, got the achievement without even trying. What is this? It's funny we, we've had harder times trying to do it legit than doing it by accident. Well, I guess that's how accidents usually happen, right? You don't even expect it. Can't complain, free achievement points. Uh, after this, ask uh, Schneza if he wants to come along and help you do the three man ness. I scale those done for you. I've been reading around the forums, and I see so much hay on Lencia. I thought people are hyped when new characters come out. Uh... Yeah, what... What Universal Best said. The, some people just want to play the OP classes. They they don't care about how fun it might be, or... What what the class is actually about. They just want They just want to see big numbers, and it's like... Yeah, complain about damage all you want, this class actually has been balanced a little, so deal with it, you know? <laughs> they didn't decide to just give it ridiculous numbers and make it OP. Sorry. Yes, I'm safe! For once. But you know what? Pe people will always complain. That's just that's just how people work. People like to complain about things. They they expect the best. They expect a perfect world. You know that, that's how a lot of people work. Unfortunately. What do you think of Furious Winds? Is it okay for Windwalker to have it? Didn't you ask this question to me already? I've, I've already explained Furious Winds. People people tell me, other, other Windwalker players tell me that they get it because they need a filler skill. I find that really hard to believe. I, I don't agree with that. If you, if you look at, if you watch how I use my skills, my skill rotation, um, Showtime, Pretty much is my is my main like main main DPS when my big skills are on cooldown. They, there will never be a time where you will run out of skills. So I don't I don't feel like that argument that Furious Winds is a filler is 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 a good reason. It's not a good reason. You you, you have enough skills to rotate between everything. And everything will be back off cooldown by the time showtime's done. So I honestly don't think you need it as filler. And apparently some people like to root themselves for like one and a half seconds with it. I as you know, I I don't use any skills really that root myself to the ground. So I am really opposed to using Furious Winds.
There's one goblin on Schneza. How much agility are you at in your standard set? Thirty thousand on my main. Um, on my alts, I'm usually sitting around twenty-two thousand or so. Twenty-two thousand agility. I don't have my gear right now, so um, I can't give you an accurate number. Actually, level sixty set. Yeah, level sixty set doesn't give that much. So. I don't really have an accurate number for you right now. It's around 20,000 or so on my alts. 30,000 on my main. How, how, why, why do you have to calculate how many points to put in Wisdom of the Owl? You don't use Wisdom of the Owl for yourself. You use Wisdom of the Owl for your party members. As a Windwalker, you will cap crit. No matter what. Once you are geared enough. No, no exceptions. You, you will cap crit. So you, you don't need that buff for yourself. You get that buff for party support. What the? That random ice. You're, you're not doing anything weird with your build, are you? Like, that that kind of that kind of puzzles me because you max crit as a windwalker, you don't get that skill for yourself. Uh, you hit you hit acrobat. Awesome.
Aha! See, that's what I tell people. People are like, don't you don't you get tired of questing and leveling? I'm like, it's it's not even about that. I don't even think about the leveling part. I just play the class and it's fun. Like the the leveling just comes as a bonus. I'm I just have fun with it regardless. So And then people are like, well, you haven't even reached reach Windwalker stats. I'm like, well, Acrobat, even archers, just like archer to acrobat to Windwalker, the whole the whole process of leveling is just so much fun. Very fun class. Wow! Probably just threw like a flame... Flame spike thing at me. I didn't even see anything coming. I just mind my own business and then poof, I was gone. Dang it, I forgot again. I always forget. Never get that done. Oh, that was the Reaper, wasn't it? Wait, was that you? I'm confused. What? And you were lovesick? That's lame. Let's pay attention to Witz's lovesick status. How do you get the achievement in the harpy stage? Uh, you don't get in the harpy stage. You get it in the in the elf stage. So it's RNG based. You're either gonna get elves or harpies. You can only complete the achievement when you when you get the elf stage. So you have to, you have to keep retrying if you get the harpy stage. Is it worth opening treasure pouches? The silver ones? Yes. It's worth opening, you get about 30% more gold per bag um, over time. Sometimes you might get something bad in it, but um, for the for the most part it averages out to 30% more gold. The only problem is you have to spend time opening them. That's the only bad part. But definitely worth opening. You get about 30% more gold.
I keep going this portal every single time. So one more third floor and we're good. We got all the runs. Hey there Lady Boleen, welcome. Nice to see you again. Oh no, we didn't kill one. We missed one. Kill them all, kill them all. No. Oh yeah, I forgot. Well, I forgot about it. So I definitely wasn't going for that. A chance you can share your playlist. Most of the songs from this playlist come from somebody else's playlist, so I have that playlist in my FAQ. I eventually want to just create my own playlist, that way you have exactly all the songs on it, but that playlist has almost all of them that I listen to. So. Uh, it's in my FAQ, like the sixth question down. There's a link to it.
Double wrap. Is Ring Chan iframe? Yes. Start up iframe? Until the arrows come out. If you want to know what all the iframes the Windwalker has, check out my FAQ. Or not my FAQ, my uh... My Windwalker guide. I explain all iframes there. Still not remembering. I need to find some way to remember either like the previous round to, to do it the next round or something. I like don't re remember by the time I need to do it. damage. It's okay, they can kill the rest. The grip. Yep, the grip. Always. I, I literally falling starred right where all the paladins were standing and where the laser was. So I, I literally like decided I was going to die by doing that. Falling, falling star can easily decide if you live or die. That's why after the revamp, it's gonna be pretty scary. Have to use Flying Star more frequently. It is, it is nice to have as an iframe, though. Like I don't really I don't really see it as too much of a damage tool. 
Like, sure, sometimes I might have to use, like, one or two falling, extra falling stars during a battle, but, like, it's mostly going to be when, uh, when it's on cooldown, I'll attempt to reset it in order to have it as an extra iframe, just in case. That's probably, like, the, the best use of it, to be honest. Because having that extra iframe can save your life. To help Wits do three minutes. going to be most of the lower level ness. Probably. I'm gonna go back to my main. That's the case. Let me store my mana quiver away. I do have some golden goose. Not a lot though. So... I'll just sell them. If you have the Golden Goose, you get even more. You get like 40 more gold. Okay though. Hey there, Dr. Euler. You won't find safer storage anywhere. There's three hundred more golds. I'm gonna go back on my main so we can get uh, those done. I can't decide between purple because it matches, or light because it's really shiny, and contrast. Like, they both work, so maybe, so maybe I'll just alternate it sometimes. Hello there, Sinister. Welcome. Anza. Juicy Vodka, thank you for the follow, glad you enjoyed the stream, and welcome. Interesting, uh, interesting Twitch name. Uh, we're gonna 
I'll give you lead. We'll just play follow the leader. Did you get the Black Dragon Legendary Sherpo? Oh yes, that's that's what the purple weapon I have right now is. That is the Legendary Grade Sherpo. Got to plus 12, it took 63,000 gold. A little more than I was anticipating. I wanted it to be less than 60,000, ended up being 63,000. So, it is what it is. But I did get it. We're doing three man achievements to help Wits start getting his achievement points. So we're gonna do all the three. We're gonna do a whole bunch of nests today, uh, lower level nests to get his achievement points. Um, luckily for luckily for you, Juicy, um, they made leveling quite a lot easier. If you follow main quest along. You get a lot more e EXP than before, and the leveling, the EXP requirements per level are a lot less. Put up his army of mirrors. Mirrors guarding every location. Uh, do, do you? You can still do that. Do you really want to subject yourself to that? That's very boring in my opinion. Now it's even even better to level with quests. And questing also gives you a lot more gold. Main quest by itself, from level 1 to 80, gives you over 2,000 gold. That's a that's a nice chunk to start out with when you hit level cap. I, I, I would highly recommend doing questing. You get EXP, you get free gear, you get free gold. There, there's no reason to rush leveling. Level, level cap will be there for you the next day, and in the next month, like... Definitely better to take your time with it. It's, it's not gonna take as long as it used to, either. Yeah, it's it's definitely worth doing now.
Yeah, it's, e it's either gonna be this update this Thursday, or it's gonna be next month sometime. I'm pretty sure it's this update. Because they've been talking about it. And left click was running through it, so it it's definitely a possibility we're getting it this time. It's gonna be a pretty big patch. Hey there, Skater. This is my first time seeing this game. All my Fiesta friends play it. Fiesta? Fiesta Online? Oh man, I remember that. Wait, Wits and I used to play that. So, so long ago. Good times. Hello there, Scrub. Welcome. Timers. Um, we played. I, th I think we played when it, like the level cap was like 85 or something, and we got to like 60 something. At, at some point, you know, the the grind fest just gets to you. The the grind um, you know, because grind was very rough with that game. Grind was very real. I remember derping and dying and like losing like 20% in less than like five minutes. I was so sad. Oh, 79 according to Wits. 79. Are you running ads? Uh, running ad- Ads do not- I'm not partnered with Twitch, so... Ads do not generate any revenue for me. I do not have any control over the ads. They are brought to you by Twitch. What's the highest enhancement number? You can go up to plus 15. Yeah, the the grind fest is real in that game. It's so real. Apparently, Wits played until eighty seven. I'm pretty sure I stopped. I stopped like way before that. Probably like around sixty something, if I remember correctly. It just it just became so such a grind fest, you know. And if you screwed up and died one time, goodbye like a couple hours of grinding.
Oh yeah. Don't do that. Dang it. You are, please. Welcome. We're going through all the old level nests to help Wits get the three man achievements. So, that's what we're doing right now. Going through some of the older nests. Getting all the three man achievements.
You don't need all gateways, do you? Okay. Hey there, Eric Helder. Welcome. That table flip, though. How many points is Wits at? No, let's ask. Hey Wits, how many achievement points do you have? Twenty three thousand and one. Not too bad. That's about where I was when Achievement Shop was released. That's about where I was. way off. I was semi-close, but I was at the wrong spot. Or going the wrong way, rather. Close enough.
tables are real. Had a good weekend? Yep. Yep, yep, yep. attention to you're ready for apocalypse nest You're slowed and then use a move. Oh, okay, we still have your invincibility frame. The invincibility frame time increases with more action, with less action speed. That is correct. So if you if you like watch me do dailies, sometimes we get those curse mobs, and you you get to actually see me iframe things in slow motion because it the iframes last like twice as long. So yeah. Every iframe still works. It actually has a longer duration. The inverse is true. If you speed yourself up with spirit boost, your iframe durations are going to be shorter. The inverse is true as well. So keep that in mind. Um, one very specific one I know is... When you're doing Guardian Nest, the suction attack, you can use Falling Star to completely iframe that when you're not spear boosted. If you spear boost yourself, you can't use spir uh, Spiral Ed no, Falling Star to, to iframe that attack. So, just keep those little things in mind. Also, a uh, Ring Shot to Butterfly Float becomes continuous with spear boost. Because that one is so frame sensitive that for some reason ring shot to butterfly float is only a continuous iframe while you have spirit boost. So there are a few little quirks to having increased action speed. But ring shot to butterfly float is not safe when you do not have spirit boost on. So this is not an iframe. A complete, a continuous iframe when you're not spear boosted. Yep, 
Yeah, so, some action speed plates will also do exactly the same thing. The leveling set it goes. Was there a time when you were leveling up a Windwalker when you thought that you weren't improving? As in, like, you were just kind of playing, but you didn't really. You're, you're not really getting anything new out of it. I think you're at the point where... I, I used to be at a state where... My playstyle was not like... Okay, so... There was a point in time where... When I would play Windwalker and I would fight bosses and stuff, I would just use my skills kind of randomly. I wouldn't know when to use them or how to use them. I just kind of use them to deal damage, you know? And sometimes I would get punished for it, and I didn't think too much of it at the time. But as I... At that state, um... I, I tried to figure out if there was something I was doing diff differently or wrong. And... Turns out... That what I needed to do... I need to be in iframe stay a lot longer. Um, that is what basically changed my whole playstyle when I started to be be in iframe state for pretty much all the time. And being in iframe state is very important. Which showtime? You should be able to have around, I would say, 70%. That is like the magic number to aim for. 70% of the time. You should be in an iframe state of some sort. This prevent this not only prevents you from getting hit, but every sing pretty much every single skill that's iframe related has a way to cancel or chain into some other iframe. So like right now, I'm in iframe state, and I'm still in iframe state. There there's very little room or time where I'm not in iframe state. And this is like this is what I would call the next step. When you, when you are fighting things, your goal is to remain in iframe state as much as possible while fighting. Almost never come out of it. And this is kind of nice that it's in slow motion too. That was kind of cool. Even, even without, uh, even without Showtime, there are lots of skills you can chain into each other to remain in iframe state for long periods of time. And then your cooldowns are back up by then. So then you just repeat the process. I think being able to do that and turning your iframe states into, you know, combat effectiveness, damage, will grant you the most effectiveness for playing Windwalker. That's like, that's like the next step. When, once you're familiar with all the skills of Windwalker, turning, turning that into good combat play is, is like the next step. And if you've seen if you've seen me play a lot and go against bosses, I, I have become I've become really really confident against bosses because of this because of the fact I'm in iframe state. Like, oh, there's an attack coming, but I'm in an iframe, or I can chain right into another iframe. So I never feel like I'm when I'm right next to a boss, like right in front of them, avoiding attacks. That's what that's why I can do it so well because I'm not afraid to. Uh, 
sit in front of a boss knowing that I won't get hit. You, you gotta build up that confidence to... to... to trust your iframes. Trust your iframes. And you have to experiment a lot. You're gonna find that at first, like, you'll get hit by the most random stuff trying to iframe, but then you'll figure out how the timing works, and once that happens, then everything will connect together. And it's pretty, it's pretty nice feeling when every single attack the boss does just kind of goes through you while you keep attacking. It's pretty awesome. Dang it. I know. that I've, I'm still trying to work on that. It's a very hard iframe. I've, I've been trying my best to avoid it. But the DC is too strong. And to be honest, once I realized that was what I had to do, that completely solidified my playstyle. After the after that point, that that's when Windwalker's like Windwalker just feels really, really awesome once you get past that stage. First is just getting familiar with combos. Second stage is like starting to chain moves together. Third stage is like uh Starting to learn like how to iframe everything, and then the fourth stage is what I just described. Combat effectiveness, iframe state, iframe uptime. And then you're pretty much where I am today. Trying to be super duper fancy and sometimes some sometimes failing at it. There are still like some little tricks I'm trying to I try to squeeze in, but it, they don't work sometimes. Like, the fancy stuff is really hard to pull off. Pull off well. Like, the the somersault kick cancels, the, um, the air pounce down to moon kick, like, the ground to air stuff is kind of rough sometimes, especially when you're trying to keep attacking. Like, some of the fancier stuff is really hard to pull off. You know Crest Guide for Sniper, I do not. Sorry, I only play Windwalkers. If you if you saw my character screen, you you just saw a wall of Windwalkers. Yeah, I play Windwalkers. Snipers probably need probably want the lucky shot plate critical damage. Um, you want it's kind of situational though. You probably want charge shot action speed. Some people prefer charge shot damage because charge shot EX's action speed is already really good. But that's up to you, I guess. You gotta decide if, which one you want. I was a huge fan of Siege Stance. I like... I... I... I abused Siege Stance so much. To the, um, I, would, I actually knew I could tank certain things when I used Siege Stance at the right time. And also, Siege Stance um, lets you jump. Siege Stance, you can jump in the middle of it if you have to avoid something. So I, sometimes I would Siege Stance, and the, even during stomp mechanics, and then just hit in between stomps. Pretty awesome. But you have to be a little careful with that. And I did Reign of Arrows as well. Reign of Arrows is very high damage. It's very hard to land all the hits, though. That's what I did, so I don't know if that's going to still apply today, but it's kind of situational. At least I would like to believe so. Be well, please. Hey there, Kai Vault. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. We are doing Old Ness because Wits needs achievements. That one has so many theories that nobody knows how to really do it. I have no idea, I got it completely at random. That's the only way I completed this Ness achievement set. Random chance. I don't know how I got it, but I just got it.
It, pretty much I ignore Titan Nest completely because of the fact I have no idea how you get that rune. And there are like 10 million theories out there about it, and there, there's no consistent way to get it, as far as I know. If anybody out there actually knows a legit way to get that rune, it would be pretty awesome if you shared info, but if it's just a theory like all the other like 10 million ways people have suggested, then probably not worth explaining because we we've tried we we we've tried theories like they that rune is so weird. So, and then a lot of people like to admit defeat and just say it's completely RNG based because that's an easy way to, to think of it, right? It's just RNG based, there's nothing you can do about it. But there's probably a way to get it since every other rune is like that too. A lot of people like to say it's RNG and I, I wouldn't be surprised if it was but I feel like that's cheating a little because every other rune you can get normally. And I have no idea how I got mine. All I remember is it was before the boss countdown. We got it like during the phase where you kill the enemies. So apparently, you can get it before the boss, before anything boss related happens. Do you think it has anything to do with killing them with cannons as opposed to doing it manually? Because the one time I did get it, it was with a low level party who couldn't do any damage to these mobs. So they just used cannons, and I used it too, so... I don't know, J just a thought. I don't know if the game has a way to even detect that, but that'd be really weird if it was like that. Uh, I just got it in the most, like, I didn't even expect to get it, and I got it somehow. No idea why. The tigers? There are no tigers here. We're talking about this room, not the other room. What? What? I don't even... See? It's so random. What? Hold on. I like how we were just talking about it and then we got it. Hey, maybe that's how you do it. Oh my goodness. Alright, well what I can do, I can probably archive this and analyze anything we've done in this room. And then maybe we can test some ideas at some point. But for now, let's go on. We, we got what we needed.
I got this. That mirror, though. It could be any worse than a giant hand from an alchemist. Nope, didn't work. A coffin spawned. Yeah, I already clicked it. I clicked it one time, and again. I have to destroy coffins, though. Hard rune is complete. Sesame's open sesame. They have a bit of HP, don't they? Oh. 